Welcome to 4C Visions. I'm your host, R.V. Hyde, Director of Communications at Central Carolina Community College. In this edition of 4C Visions, it is my pleasure to welcome David Myers, CCCC Lead Instructor of Air Conditioning, Heating, and Refrigeration, and Welding Instructor. Dave has 24 plus years of mechanical and electrical experience and eight years of both residential and industrial refrigeration and heating systems. This includes vast experience in large industrial ammonia refrigeration system, PSM certificate in those systems as well. He has earned associate degrees in industrial technology and welding technology and is a journeyman plant maintenance mechanic. Currently, he holds an EPA refrigerant certificate as well. Well, Dave, welcome to 4C Visions. Thank you, it's good to be here. Um, well, you've been in the business a long time. How has the business changed over the years? Um, a lot. The, the thing is, you know, 20 years ago, they, they started having issues with the refrigerant. They had to change it because of ozone problems and whatever. So since then, it started a process back then to make this change. And actually right now, it started like 10 years ago. So right now, all those systems that you can no longer use old refrigerants have to change to new. So in that case, you know, the, the, the amount of work out there is, is just grown past the point of, of what everyone can handle. So there's a lot of new things happening um, and efficiency is, is skyrocketing. Everyone wants to save on electricity. In the new systems now, there's a lot of more electronics in them as well as the mechanical issues and whatever. So that's kind of the direction the industry's taken, and it's very different from those who started it even 10 years ago. Wow. Well, CCCC is in its first year of having an air conditioning, heating, and refrigeration program. Can you speak to the need of such a program in the Central Carolina area? It, you know, when we started this program, I kind of go back to the history of it. It was a talk probably three, four years ago, you know, that it probably would be a good fix. We only had offered a few classes for um, industrial systems and, and some, you know, industry training type classes. And the need, you know, they kept asking for more and more. But um, where were we going to put it? And all those kind of things came up and what have you. So finally, basically like last year in spring semester, it's like we need to do this and they got turned it into Raleigh and the commitment happened and here we are now this is the first semester of it wow. it's moving forward we actually had one of the classes sections is maxed out with students which wow. was great so we're moving forward outstanding well would you highlight for our audience some information about the program and what students can expect to learn sure um, one of the thing key things that you know I follow and a lot of my other, you know, instructors in the trades is hands-on is important. You know, we try to gear the program and the classwork into working with equipment, working with things, and, and not doing it just once to say you've done it, but doing it so that it's second thought, like tying your shoes. Um, and and that's, that's how it's worked. You know, we have different classes. They've got to learn electrical. They've got to learn, you know, some hands-on theory. We take things to learning, you know, what each component does and put them together is, is the end goal. Um, they're going to build things. In, in, in talking to some of the companies, we got feedback from quite a few, and some I've talked to, a handful, and they gave us some very, very, very good um, feedback as to what they expect. So I kind of understand that, and that's my goal. That they get on the job day two because day one they learn what's going on, but day two they're going to be out working. That's, that's the goal of how we've structured it. It actually lasts for six semesters, okay. and they have a lot of opportunity for other things as they go through them. Well, can CCCC students get practical experience from their studies here, and are there any apprenticeship programs available? Oh, absolutely. I'll start with the apprenticeship programs. We were fortunate enough to get one apprenticeship program with Comfort First here in town. They have a facility out on US-1. Um, we have actually four students with that. Um, at this point in time, they've been very supportive in what we've done so far. Um, the students, it's kind of good to know that they've learned something. One has been on the job almost a year, wow. and it, it's good to know that they're learning things. But they sent them there because they said, we don't have time to get them up to speed. We only have 
you know, like there's two what they consider long-term technicians with all the answers. Mm -hmm. So that was a great goal, and I think that opportunity is looking like it's going to continue for a few more. As far as the other students, the very last semester we're doing a work-study program. I've got three companies that have kind of committed to that. Hopefully the students go and they're going to earn a little bit and they get hands-on experience actually working in the field. Um, and prior to that, you know, the classroom things, you know, I've got a variety of old equipment and some new equipment because, you know, industry has said to us, you know, not everything is brand new. Right. Um, so they got to work on old things. Um, and, and, you know, they learn the tools, whatever it takes to get it happen. So that's where the experience lies. Wow, that's exciting. What are the career opportunities like for graduates of the program? I know personally that uh, I'm constantly having to call someone to check on my unit at home. Uh, I would think that the job opportunities are just endless for this program. Well, kind of solicited like over 50 companies and put our name out there. You know, what are you looking for? Got back more than half. Wow. But, um, there were four places that came and said, and one of them has almost 80 trucks on the road. Mm -hmm. That might be, you know, one to two technicians per truck. So you're looking at a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And they said if they could double it, they would. But there's no way they're going to find the people. Right. And, and to bring, you know, on more than a couple each year would be a big thing just of training. So hopefully we fill that gap. And, you know, and that way when they leave here, you know, that training level becomes a whole lot less. That is the goal. And, and based, they gave us some guidelines of what they'd like to see them learn. And, you know, so we kind of catered it a little bit to what they need. So when they're done, they'll have not just, you know, the simple repairs, but they'll also be able to do, you know, major installs. And the other goal is they can also do, you know, like analysis for, you know, the, the load of the system, how, what they need, what the benefits are for, you know, higher efficiency versus lower. Um, and a little bit of understanding design specs so that, you know, wow, we need to update the ducting system. Well, we can do this and make it more efficient, not just the AC unit itself. So what message would you have for anyone who may be interested in attending the program? Well, my biggest message is that um, I think I said it earlier, you know, we're a hands-on program. Um, that's where it's at. You know, there's there's nothing better than actually working on the equipment itself, using the tools, doing the job. A lot of some feedback from some of the other colleges and training programs, you know, they a little bit of more simulation things, um, you know, software and whatever, and that may be good, but you know, in, in our take, it's hands-on, because that's what the companies are looking for. They want to make sure they can go out and do it, and, and, and give them, you know, a structured way to, here's a problem, it's something unique, what's happening, how do we fix it, and, and walk through a process so they learn that, and that takes a little while. So that's how we've structured the program, and, and what they'll get out of it is when they get out there, you know, the challenges that they'll meet, they're gonna have, be quicker to fix the problem with a lot less learning from, in this case, the company itself. So if you're a student uh, who may be interested in this in uh, Lee, Chatham, or Harding Counties, or anywhere in our listing audience, uh, we certainly have room for you in that for in the program. How can people learn more about the program? Uh, do, can they get hold of you to talk to you Absolutely. about that? Absolutely. Um, you can always go to the ccc.edu website and go under programs and courses, and you can look through there. We're under the technical or career and technical programs under um, air conditioning, heating, technology, but also you can. Look in there, or you can contact me directly. It's Dave Myers. My email is d m y e r s at c c c c dot edu, and phone number is nine one nine seven one eight seven three nine two. Outstanding. I wanted to also talk to you. I know that you've been a welding instructor here at the college, which has been a really great program uh, mm -hmm. for yes. a lot of people. What makes the CCCC Welding Technology Program so special? Well, um, for one thing, I work with Charlie Bell. I came on board with him when the program actually transitioned, <coughs> excuse me, from almost nothing, just a few odd courses to a full degree program. You know, we had certificate diploma, now we've advanced to associate. So kind of worked with him, you know, right through its infancy. And 
The big thing there, again, we took a little bit of what industry was looking for and try to put programs, the classes together so that they would be you know, helpful when they go out and work. And we've grown it to a level where it's been maxed out. We, we turned students away. The last two years, we have a waiting list. Wow. And, and um, we were fortunate enough through some grants to get some, three, we actually have four robots that students train with, a quarter million dollars a piece. Mm. Um, so blessed with that. Um, we do a pipe program, if you read and hear. I mean, pipe welders make very good money. Um, so we've got that going, and, and they learn a little bit of everything. And we make we, we did Skills USA last year. Had one student got first in the state, went to the nationals. Unfortunately, he didn't quite make it there, but still, what an what an opportunity for that student, and we were real proud. Of him. And of course, we do have some welding uh, opportunities for uh, apprenticeships as well. Working with, uh, I believe it's exactly. Caterpillar. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's. Um, I believe like the first year ended somewhere in like five. I think this might be the sixth group that's gone through. They're very good. If the students do the work, complete it, and 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 just excel in it, Caterpillar has been very good to hire them. Um, they actually get paid while they're here, doing some of the work, and it's been a great program. They seem to like it and planning on continuing it. So it's been a great thing, absolutely. So obviously the job opportunities are there for welders absolutely. Uh, big time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not only Caterpillar, which takes quite a few. We had, last year we had several companies come talk to students. The um, John Deere plant in Fuqua Verena, they, they build like lawnmower equipment, big industrial things for like your golf courses and whatever. They came and talked. We have numerous students have gone there. And I gotta say about them, and it's helped us in our program, their interview process, and then they do a hands-on part as well. And it's pretty intense. Students have given us feedback, and then you know the management there has said, you know, your students, when they apply, they do well enough that they get hired. So, and it's, it's quite a comprehensive little job they do. So we're pretty proud of that, but that's because we geared the program to the hands-on part. Here's what you all need to do. Let's do it now so when you get out there, you get the job make the money. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Well, Dave, let's remind our viewers one more time, if someone's interested in our uh, air conditioning, heating, refrigeration program, and the welding technology program, mm -hmm. how, how can they get hold of you or learn more about the program? Well, on the AC side, like I said, you can always go to the website and find out under programs and courses, look up the career and technical classes and follow it down to the uh, AC program. Otherwise, you can contact me directly. My phone number is 919-718-7392. If I'm not there, please leave a message and give me a return number, very important. Or you can email me at dmyers at cccc.edu, okay? And to learn about not only those programs, but any of our programs here at the college, go to our website, www.cccc.edu, and I'm sure it will answer any questions that you have about our programs. Dave, thank you for being with us today and for your service to the college. And we will return to 4C Visions after these messages. <laughs> yeah, Sam, Elmo. Oh, hey, Julia. Are you ready to play band with us? I'm going to play my clarinet. And Elmo's going to play his drum. Drum loud. Oh, well, you know what to do, Julia. Hi, Julia knows. Mm -hmm. With Julia's autism, loud sounds can be too much. But she still loves to make music. <laughs> Play band. Early screening for autism can make a lifetime of difference. Find out more at screenforautism.org. Imagine being fired because of who you love. Imagine being denied medical treatment because of who you marry. Imagine being evicted because of who you are. Millions of Americans don't have to imagine this. They have to live it. Because in 30 states, it's legal to discriminate against LGBT people. Because of you, I felt hopeless. I know it was a joke, but it still hurt me. Because of you, I feel wanted and not alone in this world. 
Because you said hi to me on the first day of school, I felt included and I knew that I was gonna be okay. You can achieve a lot using your imagination. <laughs> I mean, I don't like to brag, but... Wait, who's that? And why is she all over these achievement awards? But with STEM, the sky's the limit. Shaboom! Use STEM to envision. Okay, I'm seeing it. Yeah. Invent. Got any ideas? I've got a few, actually. And create a better world. Told you she's super smart. If she can STEM, so can you. Find out more at She Can STEM. Welcome back to 4C Visions. Terry Brown, who is the Small Business Center Coordinator for Central Carolina Community College in Lee County, is our guest. She owned and operated a small business in Sanford for 25 years and is a certified business coach. In her role at CCCC, she provides one-on-one -on -one consultation to existing and potential business owners and creates workshops and seminars to assist local business owners develop skills to help grow their businesses. Terry, welcome to 4C Visions. Thank you for inviting me. We're, I'm happy to be here today. Well, it's good to have you. What does the Small Business Center do and how does it help business owners or potential business owners? Well, the Small Business Center helps uh, potential business owners with refining their business idea, developing a business plan, um, and learning just the basic business skills that they need to, to start and, and grow a business. For potential, um, well, for existing business owners, um, what we can help them do is uh, develop uh, new ideas for their business or new skills and training. We can help them identify funding sources, and we can also help them you know, make connections or identify resources that they may need. So what we want to be at the Small Business Center is basically the first stop for anyone that's running up against a challenge in their business or for anyone that wants to start a business um, to get on the right path for what they need. Well, that's, that's awfully exciting for us. I'm sure you see a lot of people coming mm -hmm. in. Yes. Uh, and you've seen many success stories. Are there any that come to mind? And mm -hmm. it must provide you with a great deal of satisfaction to see those successes in the communities. Sure. I mean, we're always thrilled when someone starts a business or um, has a, reaches a major milestone in their business. Um, a couple that come to mind that were really exciting for us is um, not too long ago, we had a lady that we helped um, put together a plan. She approached an NFL player and got a partnership with him. Wow. Um, so that was pretty exciting. Um, we've, had, um, we've had lots of people that have purchased the buildings that they were renting their business in, so that was exciting for them not to have to pay rent in their business anymore. Um, and just not too long ago, I had a business owner send me a text, and she's on track this year to to break a million dollars in sales, so she was very excited. Well, being that. a small business owner yourself in the past, that must, uh, you must have special insight as to what a lot of these folks may need or be looking toward. Sure, um, well, anytime anyone's um, looking to start a small business, um, we always look at the three main reasons. You hear a lot of scary statistics about um, business failure rates and uh, yeah, half of businesses fail within the first couple of years and we look at what are the, the main reasons why that happens. Um, and the first main reason is that there's just no match for what they're wanting to do to what the market is wanting. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, people aren't interested in what they're selling. Um, so the second reason is um, they financially they're not prepared enough to, to, for that ramp up period. Mm -hmm. You know, there's going to be a period of time when they first start that they're going to be doing a lot of work, but not a lot of money is coming in yet. So they have right. to be prepared till they hit that tipping point. And then the third reason is just, you know, inexperience, um, hiring the wrong people for key positions. A lot of people start businesses and they want to help the brother-in-law that doesn't um, have a job. And they kind of invite family members and things in that are really the wrong people for those positions. So what we do is we take a look at the, the main reasons that businesses don't make it and we address those head on. So we make sure if they have a business idea that they've done the research to make sure that that business is actually has a you know, significant chance of um, being successful in the market. Um, we also help them prepare financially to make sure that they're ready um, to, to make it through that, that drought in the beginning until they reach the point where the business starts to make money. And you know, finally, we just make sure that they themselves are prepared and that they understand the business basics. Um, getting started and make sure they think you know deeper about the people that they bring on board 
um, to work with them. So when you kind of address the main reasons why the business has failed, then you start to look at much higher success rates for businesses moving forward. And that's exciting for communities uh, across our Central Carolina region. Sure. Terry, what are some trends you see in small businesses? Well, right now we see a huge trend in micro businesses, and mm -hmm. those are businesses that are either one or two person businesses, uh, generally less than you know five or a right. handful of employees. Um, we just had an event not too long ago where we kind of put it out there, and I'm like, I'm starting to see a lot of you know, women that are trying to start businesses from their home, let's just kind of see, you know, what, what they need. And so we put an event out for them and we, we got three times the number of people that we expected that registered and showed up. We had to move the location to a bigger location. So we're seeing a huge increase um, in that. And the reason is just because, you know, technology has reached a point where it's, it's easy to start businesses from home. People can start them while working jobs and build them up slowly over time. Um, and and they can be quite successful businesses. And, and especially if someone wants to start something and they don't have a lot of money up front to go out and start something big, they can start it small at home, build it up um, to the point that you know, they could move from the position that they're in now and, and do it full time. Excellent. Who are the people that can benefit from the services of the SBC? Well, first of all, anyone that's thinking about starting a business um, and they want to just kind of work through that idea, um, we want to see them at the Small Business Center. We certainly want to see anyone that's like almost ready to take that step to start it to make sure they've crossed their T's and dotted all their I's. Um, existing business owners that maybe feel like they've been in business for a long time, but they feel left behind by advances in social media and technology and things like that. We want to see them as well. Um, even just anyone that maybe has a dream someday they'd like to start one and they just want to start learning, you know, about business. Um, we want to see them there as well. So we just want to be the first stop for anyone that has business in mind. Absolutely. And I know that one of the things that uh, your agency does that I, I admire so much are the uh, uh, workshops that you have that you, many of them are that are offered online. Yes, um, what we notice is a lot of um, people that are in businesses don't really have the time to take away from their business to go spend three hours on a workshop. So, but we still offer those, so anyone wants to come, you know, spend more time in depth on a subject can come to an in-person class. But if they don't have the time, they can take webinars and online workshops. Um, we have resources um, available that they can go through on their own time. So. Yeah, we try to make information available in whatever format works best for people to be able to get what they need. Outstanding. Are there certain qualities that a person would need to possess to be a successful business owner, or can anyone learn the ropes? Well, anyone can learn the nuts and bolts of being a business owner. I think the main thing that, that people need is kind of an entrepreneurial mindset. And we even have classes where we, we go into that as well. So. Anyone that goes into business with the mindset that they can, you know, overcome the obstacles that they're going to face and then they're willing to roll their sleeves up and learn what they need to learn and do what they need to do can be successful in business. What do you think makes the difference between a successful startup business and those that fail? Well, I think that does go back mainly to making sure that what it is that you want to do and put out in the world is something that the market wants to see. Um, so being able to do that research up front um, is probably the key thing there and to be able to you know, manage the money well and to manage your staff well. One of the, uh, we just have a few moments left, but mm -hmm. I'd like to talk to you about an exciting new program mm -hmm. and, uh, that the uh, Small Business Center, I know that you just got a, uh, some really good news. Yes, we did. We are partnering with the Chamber of Commerce here in Lee County, Saga, the Sanford Area Growth Alliance, and Downtown Sanford Incorporated on a program we've developed that's the RISE program. And we just got grant funding um, from NC IDEA, which is a private foundation to help us um, with that program as well. What we want to do over the next three years is to put at least 72 people through that program. Um, and we want to you know, fill some of the vacant buildings in Downtown Sanford with businesses that are well prepared um, to have successful businesses, stop that kind of revolving door of businesses going in and out in Sanford, um, and to assist any, also any businesses that are already here in Sanford that may be facing some challenges to help them as well. So that's a program that's going to start this January of this year. It's going to be an eight-week, eight-class eight program. 
Um, the community has been phenomenal. There's been so many other successful business owners in Sanford that have um, come up to us and said, I want to get involved, I want to help, I want to mentor people. Every organization we've asked has been wanted to be a part of it, so we're really thrilled about um, that moving forward, and we're going to start taking applications for that in the next week or so, so we're really excited. That, that is an exciting time. What's the best advice you have for anyone interested in starting a business? Anyone that's interested in starting a business, um, my advice to them is to come see us at the Small Business Center first. Um, all of our classes, um, our counseling, all of that is free. It's open to the public. Um, there's really no reason not to take advantage of it. Um, and we do a broad range of um, training and providing resources, making connections for people. So we want to be your first stop. So that would be my advice for them. And if you are interested in small business, Terry, how can people learn more about the Small Business Center? Well, I invite them to go to our website, leesbc.com. Um, they can see on our website um, all of our events that we have coming up. They can register for free counseling there. And we have lots of free resources for them as well to take advantage of on that site. And while Terry is the coordinator of our Lee County Small Business Center, we also have small business centers in Chatham and Harnett counties as well. So if you are interested in business and you reside in one of these counties, we invite you to once again, go to our website, learn more about it. You can learn about all Central Carolina Community College programs at www.cccc.edu. Terry, thank you so much for your service. You do a tremendous job. And viewers, thank you for being with us on 4C Visions. <music>